was in Portland this last week, there are a lot of questions on equanimity. And they seem to stem from the idea that many people see equanimity as apathy, indifference. But when you look at the Buddha's life, he was not indifferent, he was not apathetic. His sense of equanimity was more keeping the mind on an even keel. And it's important to note that when the Buddha taught equanimity, he didn't teach it as a single member of a list. It was always part of a list that had other members, other qualities. And it takes up some of the qualities that it's put together with. There are three main ones. The first, of course, is equanimity in the Brahma Viharas. And that's the equanimity that realizes that even though you may have goodwill for all beings and compassion and empathetic joy, it's not the case that everybody's going to be happy, or that you can get them happy as quickly as you like, or that they will be as happy as quickly as you might like. And there are times when no matter how much goodwill you have for somebody, there's still going to be some suffering. That's when you have to have equanimity to realize there are certain things that just will not go in line with your wishes. You want things to go well, both for yourself and for others, but you run up against a brick wall. That just doesn't mean you give up. It means you simply look for the areas where you can make a difference. So the basic motivation is the desire for happiness, and simply realizing it's not going to happen all the time or happen as quickly as you like, or not in the areas where you may want. This is like the equanimity of a doctor. A person comes to the doctor, they have an illness, the doctor wants to help. He does his best, but then we'll run into areas where he can't make any difference. So instead of getting upset about the areas where he can't make a difference, he works on the areas where he can. That's one kind of equanimity, equanimity in the Brahma Viharas, the equanimity of a doctor. It's the other equanimity, which is in the context of the Buddhist teachings on concentration practice. It's there in the fourth jhana. It's one of the seven factors for awakening. And there it's related to the, the Buddha's instruction to Rahula when he very first started meditating. He said, make your mind like earth. Nice things and disgusting things are thrown in the earth, but the earth doesn't react. Now, this is a first step in the meditation. The Buddha went on to teach breath meditation, which is actually very proactive. It's not you just sit there and try to maintain the state of non-reactivity, accepting everything that comes up. That's not the Buddha's approach to meditation at all. There was that interview I saw on French TV. Well, the woman is saying the Buddhist wisdom is all about just sort of accepting things as they are and not trying to make any changes. And accepting the fact that any changes you try to make are just going to make things worse. And the interviewer asked the woman who was saying this, say, isn't that defeatist? Isn't it pessimistic? And the woman being interviewed said, only if you think about it. Well, the Buddha was not the sort of person who wouldn't think about things. He thought about a lot of things. And when you're meditating, you really are trying to get the mind under your control. You are trying to make a difference. Mindfulness is a governing principle, which underlies concentration practice, is that you try to give rise to skillful qualities and try to maintain them. In other words, you don't just watch them coming and going. You try to make them come and then prevent them from going. But to be a good meditator, you have to have a certain e evenness of mind, so that when things go well, you don't just jump at them. You've probably had that experience where the mind settles down, everything is really nice, and you get really excited, and of course that ruins it. 
how things go really well, and they suddenly don't go well, and you get upset. Well, neither response is right. When things go well, you have to figure out, how do I maintain this? And when they don't go well, how can I get things back? And that requires an evenness of mind. You might say it's like the equanimity of a hunter. The hunter has to go out, wait for the rabbit. And if he gets excited when the rabbit comes, then the rabbit will run away. Or if he shoots the rabbit and misses and gets upset about that, he's not going to have a second chance. So as you're meditating, you're trying to have the equanimity of a hunter. Things are going to come and things are going to go. You have to learn to tell you, oh, there's this. And then when there's this, good or bad, then the next question is, what do you do with it? Try not to get excited, not, try not to get upset. So you can really master this as a skill. So that's the second kind of equanimity, the equanimity in the practice of concentration, the equanimity of a hunter. Then there's equanimity in the context of the perfections. Now the major perfection is the perfection of determination. You've made up your mind, you've got a goal. And you do everything you can to go for that goal. And it's going to mean that there's certain things you've got to give up. Certain things you're going to have to do that you don't like doing, and certain things that you're going to have to give up. And there are going to be long fallow periods when things are not going well. And you have to maintain your good spirits. Not get upset by your setbacks. Able to maintain yourself. Maintain your sense of the direction you want to go and not giving up. This is the equanimity of a warrior who realizes that there are going to be some battles you're going to lose, but you can't get upset about those. You take them in stride and learn what lessons you can from your defeats. And John Lee talks a lot about this in the context of the what they call the worldly dhammas. Gain, loss, status, loss of status, praise, criticism, pleasure, pain. And as he points out, we like the, the good side, the gain and the status and the praise and the pleasure. But the good side is not always good for us. Status can go to our heads. Praise can go to our heads. People tend to forget themselves. when the quote-unquote good side comes up. And on the other hand, there are lots of good lessons you can learn when things are not so good. When there's loss and loss of status, you learn who your friends are. When there's criticism, you have an opportunity to learn, well, maybe that criticism is true. And as for praise, you have to watch out for that, because sometimes you wonder, why are people praising you? What do they want out of you? You have to be a little bit leery of what you think is the good side, and not so quick to get upset about the bad side. And this is what keeps you going, realizing that not every setback is permanent. And there are ways around it, so you keep coming back, coming back. That's the equanimity of a warrior. So the Buddha's equanimity is the opposite of apathy and indifference. It's the equanimity that allows you to attain your goals and to do it wisely and to not suffer in the process. Which is why it is contained in so many different lists. It's the grounding quality that keeps them on an even keel, so it can see things clearly that it otherwise might miss if it was getting excited. Or if it's getting upset about things not going the way you wanted them to. So 
So it's a quality we should develop in all those different contexts. as a way of strengthening ourselves. So we can reach the goal that we want. That's the other aspect of equanimity that's sometimes misunderstood. The idea that we shouldn't be having any goals, just be content with where things are. Well, the Buddha taught contentment with material things, your physical situation but discontent with regard to skillful qualities. In other words, as long as there's still suffering or stress, even the slightest bit in the mind, you can't rest content. There's got to be some way around that problem, and you have to maintain your determination to see it through. So you want to develop the equanimity of a good doctor and nurse of a good hunter and a good warrior, which is the opposite of being defeatist. After all, the Buddha called his path unexcelled victory in battle, and he compared himself to a doctor. I don't know of any places where he compared himself to a hunter. But his equanimity was the sort that all those three types of people have. 